Hey everybody, this is uh, Make Boise's Better's first expert interview. I've got Dr. Jeff Lyons from Boise State um, here to talk to us about our governance findings and, and, and give us his expert take on it. So as always, before we get going, I'm gonna do some introductions. Um, we'll start with Make Boise Better in general if you're not familiar with what that is. I'm gonna share my screen. All right. So Make Boise Better is designed to be the easiest way to be a part of local solutions. There's a lot of ways to be a part of local solutions, either by voting, um, being involved in city workshops, um, city workshops or your neighborhood association or something like that, but they're not always the best option for everybody because it, you gotta often go somewhere in person, they might not happen frequently. What I've tried to do is make a way that you can be involved and contribute in a meaningful way in five minutes or less every week. So how we do that is we send out weekly surveys, we publish the results publicly, and I provide analysis on those results. And the, the whole idea with that is to make people better informed about important local issues um, and give people a chance to make their voice heard and make it easier for people that can do something about this stuff to, to understand prevailing um, perceptions in the community because that's often what it takes to be able to act decisively with confidence is if you have if you're if you've got a sense of what people really think so that's the vision and if you want to join us and make and do your part and contribute if you click this button do your part it'll take you to the simple web form to join our mailing list and you'll get emailed surveys on Mondays and you'll get um, results or get the analysis emailed to you on Thursdays okay now I'm going to introduce our topic for today the topic is our government survey so the reason we start we surveyed about this is because we were piggybacking off of um, the city of Boise's recent workshops about growth. So they got a whole bunch of people together three different times, actually, I think five times total to talk about growth and some of the challenges that come from it and really learn from the community what people are concerned with. And the four main findings were that affordable housing was number one concern. Transportation is another one. Socio, uh, sociocultural and environmental preservation is another one. That's like making, bo keeping Boise, Boise, and governance was another one. This one is really, you could summarize it by governments not listening to us. They're not involving us in the, in the solutions. We feel like we're left out and, and you don't care what we think. So I've surveyed on all these things. So we, I took a, I wanted to help out with this and add some data to, to their efforts. So we did a housing analysis, transportation analysis, and a government analysis. And this is the one we're, we're gonna be talking about. So there's all, all these resources are public for anybody that wants to go into it. So you can check out the survey questions. If you wanna see exactly how anybody saw it when they took the survey, you can check that out. Um, the survey results are always public and they're right here. And that's what uh, Jeff and I are going to be kind of walking through and, and, and riffing off of and discussing. And we always do a um, discussion that we open up to our subscribers on Tuesday, the day after the survey comes out, to talk about what we're seeing. And this is good inspiration for the analysis post, which kind of comes out on Thursday, which is here. And if we have time, we'll go through that and see if my uh, interpretations of the results hold any water after um, after Jeff and I talk through it and we get his expert point of view. Now, given all that context, I'd like to introduce Dr. Jeff Lyons in more detail. Jeff um, is a professor at Boise State and he has his, his master's and PhD in political science from the University of Colorado. Um, and he's been teaching at Boise State and He's written, um, been an author at the Blue Review. Um, he's got some interesting art articles here. Particularly, I want to read this, Don't California My Idaho one. I'm sure it's a good one. Um, he is a 5.0 on Rate My Professor, so he's the best there is. 
Um, didn't they used to have like a hot or not thing on here, like red peppers? <laughs> okay. He's also very good looking, though we can't verify that on uh, Rate My Professor. Um, uh, Jeff is also um, the manager of the Boise State School of Public Service um, annual surveys, and the and hopefully maybe he'll give us a, a brief introduction on how these work if I missed something, but these are, these are big, pretty big um, professional academic quality um, surveys that of a thousand randomly selected um, Idahoans and also Treasure Valley, Treasure Valleyans about important local issues. Um, and these are really useful to anybody that's interested in knowing about what's going on in this area, but all particularly the Idaho legislature and helping them understand issues and what they can do. So with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff and see if, see if he wants to reinforce or correct anything I said before we get going. Hi there. Thanks. No, that all, that all sounds, uh, sounds about right. I, I just took over and started, I just started, um, directing our, our survey efforts. We've been doing them through the School of Public Service for uh, three or so years now. Um, our, our, our Dean, Corey Cook, and uh, also Justin Vaughn was running them for three years, and I just sort of stepped into a new role with that uh, this year, but I've been involved with them for the past three years. And um, yeah, we just, uh, we're, our Treasure Valley survey should be out in the field this week. Uh, we'll do our statewide survey next, uh, this coming December. So yeah, that sounds great. Awesome. Yeah, Jeff is uh, Jeff and I met um, recently to talk about his surveys and make Boise better and and how they're similar and different. And he was generous enough to um, to help me out and 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 chat about what I found with the, this government survey. So thanks a lot, Jeff, and thanks for being here. No, thank you. This is fun. Yeah, let's get this going. Um, okay, so. There wasn't a whole lot of description or context leading up to um, leading up to the the survey, but here's what here's what I had in case as a, as a very as a academic professional survey guy, you'll probably want to know how I primed the audience if I did before questions. So um, pretty simple, just said uh, you know, government has a big impact um, on a local and state and local level um and we want to know kind of what you think about public institutions so yeah that all looks i mean that how you sort of set that up that all looks pretty good to me um, great. i think i think it's i think it's good that you mentioned the dmv the local library uh because you you sometimes i think the tendency is when people say government they just think of the president congress maybe the courts uh, and they don't really have an expansive view of it so i think it's i think it's good to put that in into the respondents minds yeah yeah it, there's there's all this small government smaller or more local government that you're interacting with more often that you might not always think remember them that they're the government um oh absolutely and and you tend to interact with them a lot more you know i um i in, in the, somebody told me one time you know it's i always start off some of my american politics classes by asking the students how many governments there are in the united states and they'll say, some will say one, some will say 51, right? And it's, uh, the actual number is somewhere in the ballpark of 90,000, right? So, Whoa. Uh, uh, so that that's, sense. Really, that's really important to recognize, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Well, here, let's go into this, answers to the first question. How much do you trust the decisions of our government? So, so I wanted my, um, my rationale with this was that was kind of the um, that was kind of the impetus, or if I wanted to to riff off of um, the findings on the um, Boise Growth Workshop, yeah. that was kind of the big theme. Like, do you, are you are you do you trust that they're doing the right thing? And we go later into kind of transparency and community engagement, which is maybe also central but trust being kind of a good way to start, I thought, and not just asking, do you trust, or how much do you trust um, the boy, you know, local Boise government, but how much do you trust them 
and all the other ones that you relate to as a way to compare. So because okay. if we asked a, a just one, then you might wonder, well, is that good or bad? But being able to compare it to the other ones, it's kind of like, okay, well, who's that kind of can change the story. So I want comparison I thought would be helpful here. So, sure. so Jeff, what are you, what are you seeing in this, this question, the way this question was answered? Well, so can I ask a question first? Yeah. Um, so along the, the X axis there on the graph, you've got this zero to 10. Yeah. How, yeah. Let me, how yeah. Is, tell me how that's calculated based on the, the five point survey response. Yes. That's a good point. So, so what I did, um, well, I won't uh, pull it up, but this is a, this is how survey monkey can help you, um, come up with a weighted, weighted average. So I believe I said a great deal of trust was you scores a five, okay. um, a lot of trust scores a four, a moderate amount of trust, three, two, one, or maybe it was zero, one, two, three, four. I think maybe it was four, three, two, one, zero. So, um, I could confirm that if, if uh, Oh no, that's fine. I, I was just, I just wanted to make sure I understood the, yeah. So the bigger, the bar, the higher, the weighted average from that kind of a, of a weighting scheme. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, at, at first glance to me, that makes a lot of sense what you're seeing here. Mm -hmm. Um, in general, on average, I think it's the case that people tend to trust governments that are closer to them, right? And I think that, you know, you mentioned the analysis write-up that you had done. I think you, you, you wrote something along those lines in that analysis. So that, to me, kind of aligns with what we would expect to see is basically yeah. we, we trust the things that are closer. And we see this even, you know, within the federal government, for example. So you know, um, Congress, for example, has a really low approval rating. Some, it's usually like in recent years, it's something like 15, maybe 20% of Americans like approve of the job that Congress is doing. So yeah. we, always, you know, we widely think Congress is doing a terrible job, but we all tend to like our own member of Congress, right? And that's that same kind of idea that things that are closer to us, we tend to like more mm -hmm. uh, and to trust more. Um, when I see these kinds of things though the 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 one thing that always is kind of uh in the background here is partisanship and so i know in some of our prior conversations and, and you showed um I, you know i've seen a graph you made for a different survey of yours what the what the partisanship of your subscribers who responded to this looked like yeah right? and, and it was a, a democratic skew yeah so, but what i would say to that also is that what may be going on here and what is probably part of the story for why the federal government gets such low ratings is that you have a lot of Democrats in your uh, subscriber list who have responded. And mm -hmm. because we have Republicans currently in control of the federal government, that's a large amount of what's going on. Yeah. Um, so like, for example, we see, we see perceptions of, of all kinds of things swing wildly when like new administrations take over. So if we have a change from Democrats to Republicans, all of a sudden Democrats think things are terrible and all of a sudden Republicans think things are great. And it may not be yeah. actually about federal versus state versus local government. It could just be a partisanship story. So that's kind of the one thing right. I have in the back of my mind. And that would also then apply to, this, to the state government trust too, right? We have Republicans in control of the state government. That's a really good point. I hadn't thought of that, but that totally makes sense. How would you put, how would you, uh, maybe this is, isn't a simple answer, but is there a way to kind of correct for that? Um, um, so I don't think there's really a way to necessarily correct for it. The, the best way to, or one way to kind of get at this would be, um, and unfortunately, it just involves sitting around and waiting, but it would be to wait until we have a change, for example, in the party of the president. And then what you'd want to do is you'd want to compare these results. So you could take, you could take these results and say, here's how much Republicans trusted the federal government versus here's yeah. how much Democrats did. Yeah. Um, my sense is you would see a difference there, although you may not have enough Republicans yeah. in this in this group you have right here to do that. So, yeah. uh, but what, what you want to see is like before and after. So, um, like a, a, a fun way to look at this would have been like October of 2016 versus January of 20.
2017, right? When we see the change in, in party administration and see what happens to that. And if you, if you see big swings occur, that suggests that this is partly about partisanship. If you don't see big swings, that suggests, no, this is actually about levels of government and, so, and some sort of right, yeah. proximity to you. So that would kind of be the best way to do it. Totally. Huh, that's really interesting. Let's move on to the next one here. So similar framework, um, and then I think the same kind of weighting scheme, but now we're not doing trust, we're doing transparent or okay. transparency or how open. So um, I was trying to get at with that. Do you think, or how much do you think kind of the government like shows their cards, they're not kind of doing things behind closed doors and, and not really letting anybody mm -hmm. into the inner workings? Yeah, so a very similar pattern, right? And, yeah. and again, I would suspect partisanship is a part of this uh, narrative, but um, yeah, in, in some ways, this is one of the challenges. And I actually, I kind of doubt that this is a problem with, with your survey here, because my suspicion is that your subscribers and the respondents are pretty engaged, pretty informed citizens who tend to tend to be up on what's going on and, and know what's happening. Yeah. Um, but what, we ask these sorts of general survey questions, like so. For example, if we were to ask this question to a national sample, um, I would be concerned about the extent to which people had thought about or had real opinions about this. Um, it's the kind of thing that I think those who are really plugged in and paying a lot of attention do have real opinions about. But if you ask a yeah. national sample, a lot of people are probably going to give you an answer, but it just may not be something they'd really sat around and pondered much. Um, so, so I always kind of, you know, think about that in the background is, do I think I'm getting like real true attitudes or are people kind of guessing? Are people just sort of responding? I'm not sure, but uh, I would I, guess this. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, yeah, uh, but yeah in general, this is a, a similar sort of a, of a story. Although, you know, if we look even, even at city government, the one that scores the best here, yeah. the most commonly se selected category, right, is somewhat transparent. So it's your middle option. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, there are more people who have the more transparent responses, but it's fairly mixed, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of this mixed picture. State government, right? Everybody, you know, the bulk of people are kind of piling on to that middle option again. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of what I expect to see sometimes when people are just unsure, they just don't know. And yeah. so another thing to always think about is, do you, like when you write the survey questions, are you giving a don't know response option? So here right. it looks like you did not give a don't know yeah, response like option, which is, which is fine. Like there, yeah, which is totally fine. It, it, there's not like a consensus um, in like the literature on whether you should or should not, but it, it can change your results. So, no. right. Um, and it's a challenge to figure out because if, if you don't give a don't know option, what people who don't know probably do is they jump on that middle option because they're not really yeah. sure. They don't want to express their opinion. So they, they pile onto that. Um, yeah, and that and that's just one of those judgment calls that everybody has to make, and there is there is not a clear right or wrong way to make it, but it's something to think about when you interpret results. Yeah, you know, one thing that struck me, and I'm not sure if it's, and it's probably not something you can really uh, read too much into with 52 responses, but right. this first question, it kind of had this nice kind of gradual trend where you, it's easy for that kind of narrative of. The more local, yeah. The more you trust, right? Because we see that from like uh, from one to the next, it's like it's going down. Yeah. Um, whereas on this one, I was actually I kind of expected to see the same thing, mm -hmm. but county and state were were neck and neck at least in the weighted average. Yeah. And so I, I'm not. I didn't want to draw too much into that because, you know, maybe if we had 500 responses, there'd be a bigger story to, to tell there, but that kind of stood out as me because it wasn't the same kind of trajectory. It kind of looked like that except for this, like, you know, it wasn't in between state and city. It was just boom. Okay. It's the same level as the state. Right. No, I, I listen, I think that's a really good point is, and we always want to be thinking in surveys about, 
Like when things are close and these are all close, like are yeah, these yeah. real differences or could this have been driven by, you know, one or two individuals who gave a really strong response, but they're kind of outlier responses. Yeah. Um, you know, and so, and we always want to you know, keep in mind, and you mentioned it, right, with 52 responses, um, and these are people from your subscriber list, right? So this is not a, a, a probability sample or a random sample. So yeah. because of that, in, in this survey, like, there is no margin of error to be calculated. So that, that's one difference here is in, um, in, like, a probability sample, we'd be looking at this saying, okay, are these differences outside of the margin of error? Um, yeah. But with... Um, with a non-probability sample, we don't even make those calculations. But yeah, that's a great point. Basically, when I look at this, city seems to stand out, county and state are, are basically the same number, and frankly, federal isn't that much different either. Um, mm -hmm. So you're right, there is sort of less stratification than we saw on the trust question. And that could be because people don't have as strong of opinions about this issue or they haven't thought about it as much. Yep, yep totally, cool. So we've got one more of this type of question, and this one is community engagement, which I'll, I'll, I'll caveat this in terms of, I'm not sure everybody's familiar with the community engagement term. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of sim similar to the transparency argument, potentially, because community engagement is kind of a way you can be more transparent. Right. Um, but I particularly was interested in this, given the city's, uh, you know, the, the city tries to be transparent a, a bunch of different ways um, yeah. with open data and um, hearings and you can, you, they publish their city council meetings and, and stuff like that. Um, but the community engagement is like um, kind of a subset of the, of the ways to be transparent, I think. And these workshops kind of fall in that category. Yeah. So is anything standing out to you here? I mean, so when I look at uh, questions like this, um, yeah, it, it's, um, they're, they're, first of all, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It, it sort of fits the same kind of a theme. I try to think of like, what are, like, what, like, what would you say the federal government's community engagement efforts are? Because like, I, you know, obviously the federal government is involved in, you know, they, I mean, they solicit public feedback through hearing processes, things relating to the federal government. So like it's something going on in a national forest or something, right? Um, mm. I think many citizens might see like voter turnout or registration efforts possibly as being driven by the federal government, even though they're really not. They're driven by the state or local entities. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I guess I, I think that there's probably just more community engagement efforts being led by the city especially and also probably the county and state to some extent but yeah we just don't see it as much at the federal level um and that could very well be what people are responding to here or right. it could just again be like um democrats are upset that republicans are in, in power and they're just going to respond negatively to everything about the federal government that's also entirely possible um, yep. But it, it certainly does paint a, you know, that similar narrative of things that are closer to us, we're more comfortable with, and we tend to have a more positive assessment of, for sure. Yeah, I, my, something I thought, or came to mind anyway, was it looks like there's a bigger kind of difference on this one than there was on the transparency one. And I kind of expected them to be pretty similar. Yeah, well, it's, it was it's more it. of a divergence. And also we kind of returned to the gradual uh, related decline here instead of the county and the state being neck and neck so uh -huh. no that's true and like when you look at your uh, city government responses there only three out of your 52 gave a dissatisfied response so people yeah. are really clustering in that kind of like satisfied category um that that's the modal response there whereas at the federal government people are really clustering in the like right only eight give satisfied responses there yep um yeah, I mean, it might be kind of interesting to know if those eight are like your Republicans, right? I mean, that's, yeah. that's certainly possible. But yeah, it's definitely yeah. a similar kind of narrative that does make sense. Totally. Cool. All right. So now, so we got a lot of good mileage out of these questions. Um, yeah. We're done with these now, and, and we've kind of got some demographics now. And then we kind of, I asked some questions about news, because mm -hmm. I thought that was relevant to... Um, 
what you think about transparency and community engagement because if you don't read the news very often maybe you don't have a really informed opinion like we kind of like we talked about already right so i did ask are you a registered voter mm -hmm. i wanted to be able to kind of segment that way yep. and all but one are um, yep. and then do you plan to vote in the 2018 midterm election yeah all but two are so we have a registered voter that explicitly plans <laughs> not to vote <laughs> perhaps yeah which yeah. in the uh in the group discussion we actually talked about uh hypothesized or theorized on that for a few minutes like yeah why that is but so yeah and i, and I want to mention jump in real quick on this yeah um it's good you ask these questions. Um, these are also questions where there's strong social desirability effects. So people are tend to misrepresent their actual behavior, um, right? I mean, it, it's kind of cheap talk in a lot of ways to say, sure, I plan on voting. Yeah, I'm gonna do my social responsibility. Yeah, exactly. So it, uh, on like national surveys, for example, like our, our best done, I would argue our best done national surveys of elections are done, what's called the American National Election Study. Um, it's run through the University of Michigan. It's been going on since the 1950s or 60s. If you look at the response, and it's, it's a very well done sample. If you look at the responses to the, did you vote in the election? It's usually somewhere around 80% of respondents say they voted. We know that's not true, right? We know voter turnout is in presidential elections, like 55 to 60%. So yeah. a whole bunch of people are just saying they voted because it's, you know, we're supposed to vote. We think we're supposed to vote. So yeah. you always kind of, when you're looking at survey responses, want to keep that in mind. Again, because this is a unique subset of people who are your subscribers, that this very well could be true. These are probably very civically engaged people, but we always want to keep that in mind when we're kind of looking at survey yeah. questions. Where there is that social desirability effect. Yeah. Yeah, with this group, I would guess it, it would be pretty high that vote since these are all people that are interested enough, they want to take surveys about exactly. local issues. But maybe maybe instead of actually getting 96% of these people to vote, maybe it'd be more like 80% or something like that. Well, and the reality is some people today are planning on voting, but something's going to happen on election day, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. Their kid's going to get sick. They're going to be have to stay late at work. Uh, the, the poll line could be long. So, um, if, you know, it very well could be a, a accurate response to say, yes, I plan on voting. That does not mean that 96% will. I happen. will. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Great point. Okay, so here we go. We kind of shift into from, well, here's what I think about government. Here's what here's where I'm at um, with voting. And now I'm at kind of asking about local news. Um, so this kind of, I think, reinforces our, our perceptions that Make Boise Better subscribers and respondents are pretty in the know. Um, uh, in the, the fact that most people are saying every, they're reading local news every day. Is, yeah. is there anything striking you with this chart? So again, this, this doesn't surprise me given who I, my guess is who your subscribers are. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm sure this is probably pretty accurate. Again, there's, there's a little bit of a social desirability bias here. People don't want to say, Hey, yeah, I don't, I, I don't never read. read local. Uh, but I, I would imagine that given who these folks probably are, this is probably pretty accurate. Yeah. So you, you, you've, you've probably tapped into a very uh, engaged segment of sort of the local uh, citizenry. Yeah. Got it. So then I asked, where do you currently get all, uh, get your news about local politics? So not just local news, but local politics. Um, yeah. And maybe that was, maybe our respondents kind of caught that shift. It's a very subtle shift, but, yeah. um, but here's, here's how people responded. So we, we ended up with, the most selected um, option would be an internet news site and then like a newspaper, but online and then social media. Um, and we talked in the group discussion um, a couple weeks ago, we talked about these are a little confusing because in the local context, we might not have a lot of internet news sites that aren't newspapers online. Um, we do have a few examples. I think Boise Dev is, is one. Okay. Um, that would be an internet news site. But what, what do you think about this? Is, 
Anything coming to mind? Um, well, so, uh, so a question for you, and I, I think we chatted about this before, but um, what, what is your sense of the kind of age breakdown of your respondents to this? Because th this is one of those things that we know breaks down along age lines with younger uh, individuals generally tending to select. Like today, we know that um, our, our younger citizens are getting their news more from online sources, whether it's... Right. Right. Whereas our older citizens tend to be getting it more from still television, newspaper, things like that. So, yeah, we see. So this is not this isn't the government because you gave me that great advice to start doing right. this for all my surveys after that one. But right. let's if we just assume that it's roughly the same people that responded to the government survey the week before. This is how the, the next week broke down. Great. So yeah, so you've got, you have a, it's great. You have respondents from across age ranges. That's really good. You do have a little bit of a, right, probably an over representation of younger individuals. So that, that could be driving it somewhat, but yeah, I mean that what, what you, what you showed on the original uh, chart kind of conforms to how we understand uh, news consumption to be changing in the country, which is um, Decline in a big decline in, in hard copy newspapers, right? A, a somewhat of a decline in television and radio surges in sort of online mediums of, of various persuasions, and that's kind of what we see here. So uh, that's interesting, yeah. And 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 you know, uh, my hunch is that also amongst the more engaged segment of the population, again, like we probably have here, the online. Um, is really the the place where people who are really engaged are able to dig a lot deeper, right? Um, they're and able to hyperlinks and exactly all that. right, yeah. So I, I think it's really appealing, especially to that segment. So I think both age and engagement here are partly driving some of this. Um, the, the last piece of research I saw, and I want to say it was from a couple years back, um, said that amongst the entire U.S. population, uh, local TV news. Evening news was still the number one source of news, but it had fallen dramatically, right? Mm. So, but it still was. So again, yeah. the, the distribution could be the age, it could be the engagement, it could be both. Um, but yeah, or, or the fact that the people that signed up for a online <laughs> experience are more online. Uh, yeah. Tendency. Exactly right. Yeah, you probably don't have a whole lot of the folks on here who you know barely ever are online by virtue of this. So that's a great point. Yeah, I, I actually, one thing that stood out to me here was that newspaper hard copy, I expected it to be much lower than, you know, newspaper online, but not by like a factor of four. Yeah, um, it's big. So that kind of st stood out to me as surprising. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, that is a little surprising. Um, I'd be interested in knowing the the age breakdown of comparing those two groups my my hunch is because you I mean you do have respondents across the age spectrum right so yeah my hunch is that's probably on average a much older group um yeah. who just traditionally right maybe they've been getting the idaho statesman or the new york times or whatever hard copy for a while and they're just you know they just keep getting it and they, and they probably are also supplementing right so because this is a check all that apply question these could be folks who are doing both they're yeah. they're getting the hard copy they're also uh, going online. They're also doing right other things as well. But yeah, we, we, we know that hard copy newspaper consumption amongst young uh, Americans uh, is, is fairly low. Yeah, that was uh, I, I really quickly looked for a, um, a chart on this and this chart was kind of striking. This is journalism. Oh, good. Uh, where, here, here it is, I think. Yeah. Circulation of Daily newspapers. I'd seen this before and just this, you know, precipitous decline. Well, yeah, and keep in mind, like what what's interesting there is so that's total circulation. But the population is increasing dramatically across that time. So so not only is oh, total yeah. falling, but readership per capita is really falling because you population growth more pronounced, yeah. Oh yeah. Population growth since nineteen forty has been huge. So so your per capita number is really low. Wow, that's a good point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that's interesting. That's a good. That's a good figure. Yeah. Okay. So we're into our last chart here. So I would say. Well, I so I asked here, and this was kind of a. Um, 
something I was interested in in terms of like who kind of has the who has the upper hand in terms of credibility or trust in terms of like political news. Mm -hmm. and so I wanted to ask, who do you trust the most? And and this is particularly interesting to me because Idaho Press, um, I think headquartered in Nampa, yeah, originally well hadn't had as big of a presence in Boise um, until recently, but they've made some kind of aggressive moves to yeah. hire on some of the statesman's reporters. Um, mm -hmm. They recently bought the Boise Weekly. So that in, a, in a way, it was kind of tricky that I separated them here to see. So I don't think maybe everybody knows that, that Idaho Press bought the Boise Weekly. So I was curious to see separate. Right. Right. Well, mm -hmm. and they also got right Betsy Russell, who I think when it comes to local political news and Idaho state news is right. One of the, one of the main sources. Yeah. Yeah. So anything surprising to you here or. Uh, no, I, you know, I mean, the Statesman is, is, is the big name, right. And they are, they, and they have been for a long time. So, so I, my suspicion is that these things like, so, and, and you're right, you mentioned Idaho press making like a lot of, you know, aggressive moves in this arena it probably could take time for that to show up in this kind of a question, right? It's probably not like an instantaneous switch where, I mean, I, I don't know, at least like me personally, I, I'm, I'm in sort of a habit, right? When I want to go read the news, I, I, I know like I just type in IDA and Idaho Statesman, you know, populates in my thing and that's where I go because that's what I'm in the habit of doing. So my guess is it's probably going to take time for it to show up in something like this. Um, those sort of consumption habits are probably not instantaneous. And like yep. you mentioned, people may not be aware of a lot of these kinds of things, right? Yep. They just kind of know that for a long time, the Idaho statesman has been where you go. Uh, right. Are what you're saying. And that's not to say that like the Idaho statesman shouldn't have the, you know, half of the respondents here. They're, they do a, you know, a, a good job of reporting. They've got a large local presence, all of that. So, right. um, so yeah, I, I wouldn't, I don't see this as surprising necessarily. This looks like about what I would expect. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, so it looks like the Idaho press kind of has, or uh, the statesman's got them by like, uh, they're three times as trusted roughly. But I thought it was interesting if you, if you were to put these two together now, since they're both owned by Idaho press, you end up with, True. you know, close to 35% versus 50%. And again, True. we have a small sample, so we can't, you know, those numbers might not hold out with, with 500 samples, but maybe it's a, maybe they're a little closer in terms of strategic position with the readership. Um, yeah. Put those two together. Yeah. And, and you know, pe people just may not be aware of it, but they could actually be doing right. You know, better than this reflects. Um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. And people might not even realize that. Right. They own the Boise Weekly, but oh yeah, no, yeah. I'm sure very few. I I didn't know that until you just said it. So yeah, I'm okay. sure that's not widely known. Yeah, yeah. Well, cool. So at this point, yeah, I know we're we're running low on time. So let's uh let's pull up here and um and I would just say this was a great conversation. Thank you again. Um, yeah, but. Given everything we've covered, do you walk away from this discussion thinking about this? Like, what, is anything sticking out in your mind about this survey? Like, this was a big challenge with this survey, or this this was the key finding, I think, or anything like that. Anything stick out? Yeah, I mean, so that the differences across the levels of government definitely stick out. Um, and like I said, I would just want to know the composition of the group to know kind of what that tells us more broadly speaking. Is it, is it really driven by the over the over response of Democrats in, in the survey or is there something functional going on? And so, uh, and unfortunately that's what, and this is so common in survey work is that it's hard. It's hard to tease that stuff out, especially in one survey. It's just difficult, right? Like I said, you know, well, wait until maybe party of the president changes in 2020, but it may not, we don't know. So, right. Um, so yeah, but, but that I do think like, and, and as much as I've, I've sort of put caution around that, I, I, to me, it makes sense. And I, we do see research suggesting that people are more comfortable, more trusting with local levels of government. Um, and certainly, you know, the city of Boise has been, uh, you know, the other thing to talk about is, and, and you mentioned earlier, sort of the, 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 the public meetings the city has been doing and these kinds of things have gotten right a fair amount of press. 
uh, as they should. Uh, you have an engaged subscriber base who's probably well aware of those kinds of things. So the other question it raises in my mind is, what would these, and there's no way to know this, what would these responses have looked like six months ago, before the city started doing this, before it was in the news, right? And that, because that also taps into, one, one of the difficulties is teasing out like real stable attitudes versus I'm going to give a survey response because I've seen something in the news recently. And we're always struggling with that. It's a really hard thing to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's something else that I always keep in the back of my mind. But yeah, no, overall, I think it's interesting. And I think that, um, you know, e even if it is a younger, more democratic sample, it's great to know what those sort of citizens think, right? Yep. So, fantastic. Totally, yeah. And I think, um, given your points on that and the, the timing being a big factor, uh, one takeaway is that this, for me anyway, this might be a good thing to repeat at some point down the road, asking, if not all the same questions, uh, several of the same questions and see if we get the, sim the same or something close to this again, or if it's different and, and thinking about why that might be. I think that's exactly right. I think, I think that would be a great, so yeah, come back to this in a year or two. Um, you know, your sample will be different probably. Yeah. Um, but what would be interesting to compare would be to say, okay, let's take my Democrats from the survey that you've done and see what they thought. And then let's compare them to your Democrats in a year or two from now. So look, look within party over time. Same demographic, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's a great idea. Cool. Well, um, Jeff, anything else uh, that comes to mind? I think it's time to wrap up, be respectful of your time. I think you've already given me some bonus. <laughs> no, uh, it's fun. I, I love talking about survey stuff. So this is a this is a cool thing you're doing. Well, thanks a lot. Um, I appreciate it. And um, yeah, this will be on YouTube soon. So if you want to sh share this with everybody and, and another way you're getting famous, feel free. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Have All a good right, one. Yeah. Bye. -bye.